I'm Ryan Tweet from the Technoclone Robotics Team 3018, and this is our robot Sheila. I'm just going to take some time to demonstrate how our robot works, what it can do, and how we went about solving some of the problems we faced while trying to get it to do some of these things. The first thing we're asked most about is how we got our robot to have its arms go over center. This is what sets our robot apart, makes it unique, and actually won us the Innovate Award at the World Robotics Competition. Second thing is the intake wheels. They're a little bit tricky and a lot of teams are having trouble getting them to work properly with their design. So first, about our robot. We put six 269 motors on our drivetrain to give us enough strength to move our robot around. We put two 393s in the high strength mode on the arms to lift our cage, and we put two 393s on the intake wheels in high speed mode to pick up tubes faster. For our parallel lift arms, they're kind of unique. They have an open center which allows us to pass all the way over to the back. The reason we wanted a robot to be able to do this is so that way we could load tubes and score on the movable weighted bases inside of our robot and be able to use things like our low post alignment device to line up with the bases. But in order to do that, you have to be able to reach outside of your robot to reach the high posts on the wall, which is why we developed the system where our, our robot is able to reach outside of its base and onto the wall. In order to get our tube cage to pass over the center of a robot and be able to reach over the back and outside of a robot's base, we had to keep it vertical as it went over the apex of the arc. To do this, we had to prevent it from tipping at the top. When it's at the top, the parallel lift arms are all vertical and provide only one plane of support to keep the tube cage from tipping. In order to help prevent this, we offset the two arms. One side is further forward than the other side. This provides two planes of support at the top. In addition to offsetting the arms, we tied the top arm and the bottom arm of both sides together with chain. This keeps them together as they move up and down. We put bungee on the chain to keep the chain tight and to provide buoyancy for the cage, helping remove the dead weight when we lift. In addition to the chain and offsetting the arms, we also loosened certain points of contact between the arm and the cage in order to provide some tolerance when we pass over the center. Even if it tips, it'll still snap through the top. For the intake system on our robot, we have intake rollers on a 360 degree closed loop bevel gear system. They're controlled by two 393 motors in the high speed mode, and they all rotate inward and outward together. We have a tube, they rotate just like that. We have them tuned just tight enough to hold the tube in when it's by itself, and to not drop it when we're driving around, yet loose enough that it will pop in without too much force. We could load singles quite easily or we can load whole stacks. If tubes are crooked, the intake wheels will center the tube before loading, giving us a higher tolerance for error when we're loading tubes. If two tubes are stacked on top of each other, simply moving the robot will pick it up. Here's a better view of our intake wheels. In each corner we have bevel gears and each motor is powering its side. Thus, if one motor were to fall out, all of them would still be powered by this motor. If this motor were to fall out, this motor would power them all, but they're working together sharing the load. When the tube comes, it fits nice and snug. If the tube is up here, it's still touched by rollers. It's 
So anywhere in this area, it will get pulled into the center when we load it. So you can see how much it's held in there by, and it can hit quite a bit before it'll fall out. 